Dear students, welcome to the 15th online class of Control System Engineering. Today we will start chapter 6 which is about stability of a system. In this chapter we will study how to find stability of a system. And system will range from first order system to a higher order system. And this is also our course learning objective for dear students after this chapter you will be able to find stability of a system using route table you will learn how to make the route table and interpret the results from the table for various cases like when first element element is zero or a row of zero occurs Dear students, now we will start contents of the lecture. In this lecture, we will discuss stability, stability due to natural response, bio-stability, and stability due to pole's location. We will discuss the necessary and sufficient conditions for stability, and then we will start routh hurwitz criteria. Dear students, stability is the most important specification of a system. If a system is stable, then you can find transient response or check steady state error specification. But if your system is unstable, then unstable, then transient response and steady state error have no practical relevance. An unstable system cannot be designed for specific transient response specification or steady state error requirements. There are many definitions for stability depending on the kind of system or the point of view. In this lecture or throughout this course, we will limit our system to linear time invariant systems. Dear students, as studied in last lecture, the total response of a system is sum of two responses, forced response and the natural response. Natural response is due to transfer function, due to transfer function or the poles of the system where forced response is due to input of the system. Now using these concepts, we present the following definitions of stability, instability, and marginal stability. And we will define these terms on the basis of natural response, biostability, and pole's location. Dear students, as defined earlier, that natural response of a system is response due to transfer function of the system or in fact the poles of the system. Now we will define stable, stable, unstable and marginally stable system on the basis of natural response. A linear time invariant system is stable if natural response approaches zero as time approaches infinity now now a linear time invariant system is unstable if the natural response grows without bound as time approaches infinity now for marginally stable system a linear time invariant system is marginally stable if the natural response response neither decays nor grows but remain constant or oscillate as time approaches infinity. Now the definition of stability implies that forced response remains as the natural response approaches zero. Dear students, 
as we have discussed criteria for stability under natural response. But when we have total response of a system, it may be difficult to make separate the natural response from the forced response. However, we realize that if input is bounded and total response is not approaching infinity, as time approaches infinity, then obviously that natural response is also not approaching the infinity. But if we, if we have an input which is unbounded, for which we will get an unbounded response from a system, then we can't conclude what will be the stability of a system under natural response. Because for unbounded input, and unbounded output is available. From this, we can extract no information about the stability of a system. And also, we cannot tell whether the total response is unbounded because forced response is unbounded as unbounded input is applied. Or it may be the natural response is unbounded. Dear students, now we will define stability on the basis of input or for bounded input and bounded output. Under bounded input, bounded output stability, a system is said to be stable if every bounded input gives us a bounded output. And a system is said to be unstable if any of the bounded input give us an unbounded output. So if there exists any single, bound, single bounded input for which our system give us unbounded output, then our system will be unstable. And for every bounded input, if we get a bounded output, then our system is stable. And we call this, st this statement the bounded input bounded output definition of stability. Dear students, now we will define stability on the basis of poles location. Now we will focus on natural response definitions of stability where in last chapter we also studied that if poles of a system are on real axis in left half plane then natural response is of exponential decay and if we have a complex poles in left half plane then we have a damped sinusoidal natural responses and all these natural responses decay to zero as time approaches infinity. So on the basis of this we will define that if the closed loop system poles are in the left half plane and hence have, have negative real part then system is stable. Dear students, now we will discuss pose location for unstable system. If poles of a system are on real axis in right half plane, then we have pure exponentially increasing function, function. or if we have a complex poles in right half plane, then we have exponentially increasing sinusoidal natural responses. And these natural responses approaches infinity as time approaches to infinity. So if closed loop systems poles are in right half plane or have a positive real part, then our system is unstable. Dear students, in continuing definition of unstable system, if we have poles of multiplicity greater than 1 on imaginary axis, 
This lead to the sum of responses of the form a multiplied by t power n multiplied by cos of omega t plus pi. Now if we know that as time will increase the value of t power n will also increase unboundedly with the time and to infinity as time approaches infinity. So now we will complete the definition of unstable system under pole's location if the closed loop system transfer function have poles with at least one pole in right and or poles of multiplicity greater than one on imaginary axis are known as unstable systems. Dear students, now we will study with the help of example about stable and unstable system. If you look at the system in figure A, we have a closed loop system where forward path transfer function equals equals 3 divided by s into s plus 1 into s plus 2, which means that open loop system have poles at origin minus 1 and minus 2. Now for, now for closed loop system first of all we will find transfer function and then the poles location. If you look at the poles location we have we have one pole at minus 2.67 and a complex pair of pole at minus at minus 1.64 plus minus j 1.407 as all the poles are in left half plane so our system is a stable system now if you look at the system in figure b in this b in this if you look at forward path transfer function in this we have poles at origin minus 1 and minus 2 but when we find closed loop transfer function our poles of the system lies at minus 3.087 and a complex pair of pole at 0 0.04 plus minus j 1.505 now as the complex pair of pole is in left half plane so our closed our closed loop system is unstable and we also studied this in first chapter that converting a open loop system into closed loop system we may lose the stability of a system here you can see in figure B that our open loop system was stable where our closed loop system is unstable system Dear students, now we will study necessary and sufficient condition for the stability of a system. We can draw certain conclusions about the stability of a system under certain conditions. First conclusion, first conclusion is if we have a transfer function of a closed loop system whose poles lie in left half of S plane then the transfer function will have a denominator whose factor will consist of terms such as s plus a i such as s plus a i where a i is real and positive if poles lie in left half plane and are complex then the real part must be positive and the product of such terms forms a polynomial forms a polynomial with all positive coefficient now if we have a polynomial for a denominator of a transfer function in which all the coefficients are positive and no coefficient is missing here our system fulfill the necessary condition for the stability of a system 
but yet we don't have any definite information about the pole's location. Though our system is fulfilling the necessary condition, but yet, but yet, we are not sure about Dear students, now if we have a transfer function of closed loop system and if polynomial of denominator have a missing term, this would imply that cancellation may occur between positive and negative patient or imaginary excess roots in the factors, which is not the case. Thus, a sufficient condition for a system to be unstable is that all the signs of coefficient in the polynomial of denominator of the closed loop system must not be the same. And if any power of the S is missing, then our closed loop system may be unstable or can be marginally stable. Students, as studied earlier, that poles of a system defines the response of a system so stability of a system have primary concern with the location of poles in S plane. Dear students, now we will summarize the discussion of necessary and sufficient condition for a stability of a closed loop system. Consider we have characteristic equation or polynomial of denominator of a closed loop, sy closed loop system who has coefficient from A0 to AM and the Laplace operator S have highest power of M and minimum power of 0. Now the necessary condition for the stability are all the coefficients of the equation must have the same sign means the coefficient starting from a0 to am must have the same sign and the second condition is that no term must be missing which missing which means that no coefficient will have the value equals 0 now this fulfill the necessary condition for stability. If any of the above two conditions are not satisfied, the system will be either will be either unstable or marginally stable. But if all the coefficients have same sign and no term is missing, we can't guarantee a stable system because this fulfills necessary condition for stability condition for stability to find out stability of a system we need to know in what plane they are lying for this we will use routh hurwitz criteria dear students now we will study routh hurwitz criteria this method gave us information about stability of a system without solving the denominator or characteristic equation of closure of closed loop system with the help of this method we get information that how many poles of a closed loop system lies in left half of s plane right half of s plane plane or on j omega axis we can find the number of poles in each section of the s plane but we have no idea about their exact location this method is called routh hurwitz routh hurwitz criteria for stability dear students you may think that why we are using routh hurwitz criteria to find stability of a system with the help of modern calculators and computers 
we can find the exact location of system poles. Students, answer to this is, this method is used for design purpose rather than analysis of a system. If we have an unknown parameter in denominator of a transfer function, then it is difficult to determine for what, for what range of parameter system will be stable. But with Rauth Hurwitz method, we can find out exact range of values for which our system will be stable, unstable or marginally stable. We will study this in an example at the end of this chapter. Now coming to the route table, this method consists of two steps. First step is to generate a route table and second step is to interpret the route table and find out how many, po how many poles of closed loop system are in left half, right half or on J omega axis of S plane. Dear students, now we will study how to make route table. For this, look at a transfer function of a closed loop system given in the figure. We are interested in the poles, so we will look at the denominator of the transfer function. The polynomial of denominator have the highest power of 4 and minimum power of s power 0 and no coefficient is missing which means that a4, a3, a2, a1 and a0 all are present. Assuming values of all the coefficient is greater than 0, this fulfill the sufficient condition of stable systems. Now to find in which plane poles of closed loop system lies, for this we will generate route table. In route table we will have a first column in which all the rows of first column will be labeled with the power of s from the highest power of denominator of the closed loop transfer function to the s power 0. Now corresponding to power of s we will place the coefficient from a4 to a0. Now for placing the coefficient we will start, we'll start from the coefficient of highest power of s in the denominator and list it horizontally. In the first row every other coefficient which means that in first row we will be having coefficient of a4 then we will skip 1 next coefficient will be a2 then we will skip a1 and last coefficient will be a0 now in second row we will list horizontally starting with the next highest power highest power of s every coefficient that was skipped in the first row which means that corresponding to the s3 row we will be having coefficient of a3 then a1 and as in the denominator we were having co we were having coefficients up to a0 so a zero will be placed in next column and with this we will complete first two rows of the route table dear students now for upcoming rows each entry will be a negative determinant of entries in the previous two rows divided by the the entry in the first column directly above the calculated row and the left hand column of the determinant is always the first column of the previous two rows and the right hand column is the element of column above and to the right the table shows when all when all the rows are completed if you look at 
entries corresponding to s square rows first element will be negative determinant of entries in the previous two rows which are a4 a3 a2 a1 and, and divided by the first element of the row directly above the calculated row which means a3 now for all upcoming entries left hand column of determinant will remain same which will be a4 and a3 where right hand column will be shifted now for second entry of b2 will be equal to negative determinant of a4 a3 a0 a0 and divided by the first entry of of the row directly above the calculated row which is again a3 and similarly we will calculate for a3 now row corresponding to s1 the first element will be c1 which will be equal to negative determinant of four elements of two rows above it which are a3 a1 b1 b2 divided by first element of the row which is directly above the calculated row which means b1 and in the same way we will find other entries for the table which are c2 c3 d1 d2 and d3 and with this our route table will be completed dear students second part of route table is interpreting the table this method tell us about the distribution of poles in right half left half or on j omega axis of s plane of s plane this method give no information about the exact location but it define the region in which poles of the closed loop system are lying in route table if all the elements in the first column have the column have the same algebraic sign then our closed loop system is a stable system and if in first column signs are not same then the number of sign changes of the element in first column is equal is equal to the number of roots of characteristic equation in right half of the s plane or the number of these sign changes equals number of poles in right half plane or positive real roots so the routh hurwitz criteria the routh hurwitz criteria declares that the number of roots of the polynomial that are in the right half plane is equal to the number of sign changes in first column dear students in the next example we have to make a route table for the closed loop transfer function of a system given in the figure a dear students now we will start a solution as a first step we will find the equivalent transfer fun equivalent transfer function because we want to test the denominator of this function so for polynomial of denominator we have the characteristic polynomial which will be equal to 1 plus g of s equals 0 where g of s where g of s is the forward path transfer function so characteristic polynomial will be p of s equal s cube plus 10 s square plus 31 s plus 1030 dear students now with the help of characteristic polynomial we will make the route table the highest power of laplace variable in the characteristic polynomial is s cube so we will label all the rows with the power of all the rows with the power of s starting from s cube to s power 0 as shown in the table students after this 
we will place the coefficients of characteristic polynomial in first two rows of the table rows of the table we will start with the coefficient of highest power and skip the every other power of s which means that corresponding to the row s cube we will have coefficient of s cube which is 1 then we will skip the s square which is 1 then we will skip the s square then we will have a coefficient of s power 1 which is 31 and in the last column we will have a 0 entry now for the second row which corresponds to s square we will place all the s square we will place all the coefficients which were skipped in the first step dear students subsequent rows are formed with a negative determinant as shown in the table the first element corresponding to the row with label s1 will be negative determinant of previous two rows and divided by the entry in the in the first column of the row above the calculated one as discussed earlier we will use these steps to complete the table for convenience any row of the route table can be multiplied by a positive constant without changing the values of the row below row below if you see the table second row of the table is multiplied by 1 by 10 further you have to take care to avoid multiplication by a negative constant and with this our route table is completed for the given the given example now if any of you have any questions please ask